Welcome back. I'm Jim Shudo in New York. President Obama says there is no U.S. military option on the table for Ukraine. This week, he also said the situation is not, in his words, amenable to a clear military solution. But as we've been reporting, in just the last hour or so, U.S. soldiers will begin small-scale military exercises in both Poland and Estonia very soon. I want to bring in Congressman Adam Schiff. He's Democrat from California. He's also a member of the House Intelligence Committee and also returned recently uh, from a visit to Ukraine. Uh, Congressman Schiff, uh, now that we've heard these details of these, these U.S. military exercises, they're small, about a company each in, in Estonia, uh, in the north, and Poland just to the west of Ukraine. How significant do you think this military gesture is? I think it's very positive. I was in Lithuania as well, Jim, and they're hungry to have a greater NATO presence there. Uh, my expectation is that this will be just the beginning of a, a greater NATO presence. We've already seen more fighter jets now, these small military exercises. Uh, but I think that there should also be some forward deployment of assets uh, to re, you know, re, uh, reinvigorate the confidence within our NATO partners in the region that we will stand by Article 5, which says basically an attack on any of them is an attack on all of us. Uh, so I, I think the military exercises are a very good idea. They're not so large that they're going to cause the Russians to escalate, uh, but I think we will need to do more along those lines. Just as you were talking there, Congressman Schiff, the map came up on the board. And I just want to remind our viewers where these troops are going so they know Poland, uh, NATO ally just to the west of Ukraine. Estonia, also NATO ally, which, as you can see there, borders Russia. So this, these will be U.S. military exercises right on the border with Russia. Now, to be fair, Congressman Schiff, uh, it's, it's a 300 force troops in total. total. There are 40,000 uh, Russian forces just to the east uh, of Ukraine. Uh, based on your travels there, uh, what you saw on the ground, uh, were you more concerned when you left there that Russia would send those forces inside Ukraine? Uh, certainly very concerned about it, Jim, because we see all of the same kind of pretext we saw with the invasion of Crimea taking place in the eastern part of Ukraine. I think the uh, tentative agreement that was reached in Geneva may be a, a pause to take a breath here. Mm -hmm. uh, that may be a positive, but probably a small positive, and I think we still need to prepare for the worst, which means that we need to try to line up our European allies for very strong sector-wide sanctions if Russia moves in. Now, Russia has a big say in what goes on in eastern Ukraine. They have a big say in what these so-called protesters are doing that are taking over government buildings in the east. Uh, and if they wish to escalate and destabilize further, they, they can do it. And they need to know there'll be a price to pay if they do. Uh, the one thing I think is positive, Jim, is if these monitors that are going in uh, can be successful in helping to oversee the elections that are supposed to take place in late May, that could be a big bo boost for the Ukraine government uh, and give it uh, legitimacy throughout the country. Uh, so they could play a very important role if the Russians don't uh, meddle too substantially. You know, we, we spoke to Ambassador Chris Hill a short time ago, former U.S. Ambassador to Iraq. He, he raised an interesting point. He said that, you know, as these uh, pro-Russian forces that have seized these buildings in eastern Ukraine have so far refused to comply with his agreement to vacate those buildings, that, that it, it's possible that, that Russia may not be able to control them anymore. He also made the point that Russia has been very cynical throughout, so they may not be trying to. Uh, I wonder what you think is happening here with this agreement. Uh, is Russia not following through, or does Russia not have the ability in effect to follow through? I don't think Russia's following through. I think they do have the ability. Uh, it's certainly true that uh, Russia could unleash forces that later it would be hard to contain even for Russia. But it's hard for me to believe, given the Russian uh, Secret Service presence there, given uh, how many of these people are carrying Russian arms and operating according to a Russian playbook, uh, that Russia doesn't have a greater say in telling them to stand down. Uh, so you may have some of the, the loudmouths there that are, are saying they're not going to do what Russia wants. But my guess is if Russia put its foot down, uh, these buildings would be vacated in short order. Well, thanks very much, Congressman Adam Schiff. He, he's seen it on the ground himself. We appreciate your analysis on the latest developments. Thanks for joining us. You bet.